Welcome to our April 16th worship service from North Coast United Methodist Church. Doubt is faith's shadow. Today as we go through this, we celebrate the reality of being willing to investigate. Please be with us as we put a positive narrative on the narrative of Doubting Thomas. Because when we are in our moments of doubt, the light of faith is still shining. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Let's join together for our call to worship. Even though we have not seen the Lord, we can still love God. Even though we cannot touch God's hands, we can still believe. As we gathered here as the body of Christ, let us see Christ in one another. Let us say without hesitancy or doubt, we have seen the Lord. Even in this video sermon, as we are distant, remind us, God, that we truly are together. Come, let us worship. Amen. This is our new series about disciples. So we're going to learn all about disciples and maybe there'll be some that you don't know about and maybe some that you do know about. So we're going to have some fun for the next couple of weeks. So our new Bible verse comes from the Bible and it's from Deuteronomy 13, 4. It is the Lord your God you must follow and him you must revere. Keep his commands and obey him, serve him, and hold fast to him. So what does it mean to be a disciple? There's kind of an old term. It's used a lot in the Bible, but we don't really use discipleship anymore, do we? Outside of church, really. But really, you can be a disciple about almost anything. It just means to follow. Like, I follow a lot of different sports. So that could mean that I'm a disciple of that sports team, or I love to paddleboard and I love to tell people about paddleboarding, meaning I share the knowledge and I share my love of paddleboarding. So I'm a disciple of paddleboarding. That's very true. That is what the disciples did of Jesus. They shared their love of Jesus. They shared their knowledge of Jesus with the world and they followed Jesus, right? And that's exactly what the disciples did. However, while I may love sports and I may love paddleboarding and I may love Lego and I may love Star Wars and I may love Disneyland, the first thing on my heart is always Jesus. So Jesus, sports, mm paddleboarding and everything else always comes second. So, Jesus, everything else. So we're disciples of so many things in our lives and we didn't even know it for so long and we've always been a disciple. So I'm a disciple and you're a disciple. Thou art the Lord, 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 the
together in prayer. Lord of life, come into our midst with words of peace. Gather in our midst that we might know you are truly here. Guide us in unity and love and free us from doubt that haunt us, that we might be a blessing for one another and for the world. Amen. Our scripture today comes from John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless that I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Through the door came Christ and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Let's join together in prayer. Precious God, we exist in lives that bring with it so many questions. We hear things, we get news, we get facts and figures, and we still have to dissect it further so that we know what we are working with and what we are responding to. Today, as we look at the scriptures, we look at Thomas, I want to use Thomas as an image of motivation. I want to use Thomas as an image of what it means to study to show ourselves approved. I want us to use the image of Thomas as a deep-rooted example of what it means to take justifying grace seriously. Precious God, be with us in this time of this conversation. Amen. The negative phrase that we deal with from our cultural, our faith journey is the doubting Thomas. It's a negative connotation. It's actually a negative conversation in this scripture because Christ begins to use Thomas's journey as an example of what does it mean to have to see something and how much greater is it if we can step up and grow and trust and just believe. We're going to exist in the the negative connotations today. And I'll even bring them up again from last week's Easter video that I shared with you. We use this imagery that Mary believed so much that she ran out to share with others that she didn't have the facts. Last week in our Easter video, I used the imagery of Jesus Christ meeting the fishermen on the shore. And without having the facts or figures, they dropped their nets and followed him. There's so much that exists within our faith life that that shows what it means to have a strong, powerful faith that we are willing to, to jump 
to jump into the deep end of the pool. We are willing to take these bold steps. We are able and willing to take bold steps in faith and to try things and to do new things and to go new paths to see what doors will open. All of those are beautiful things that we strive for every day. We need to exist within a realm that faith overcomes what we see. We see the everyday so frequently and the everyday becomes very, very frustrating. There may come times in our lives that we share the statement, if this is the everyday, I don't like it. So we need to find ways that we are able to set down our nets and go. And we need to find ways that we are able to experience something and we need to go out and share it without uh, tearing it apart and breaking it down into something that's actually not, like we observed in Mary. But I want to share with you, we should also study to show ourselves approved because we need to become rooted in what we believe in and not just share what we feel. We also need to have lives that we have a rooted foundation in substance so that we're just not running off and making decisions that in the long run may create harmful effects of faith for other people. And for us, we don't spend time just justifying what we believe in. We spend time teaching and learning and growing and sharing and discipling and training what we've learned. And that's what I want to lead into today with Thomas. I am blessed with Thomas. I, for me, continue to see an image of Thomas as a necessity of grounding myself in my intentional responses to what Jesus Christ has done for me. I see a quest of being a Thomas when I am reacting and responding and doing I want to know it was Christ that did this for me. I want to know the positive effects that could come from being a participant in X, Y, and Z. I want to know what doors will open for other people if I step forward in actions of justifying grace and respond. I want to know those things. I also want to go out and participate in these things and not become a roadblock. I don't want to drop my nets and go and then do something harmful that slows the beneficial effects of ministry for another person. I want to learn about the situations. I want to interact in these situations. I want to be involved in these situations. Today, as I record this video for you, and I know that you'll be watching this on April the 16th, but today as I record this video, it's March 31st, and March 31st is the Transgender Day of Visibility. I am intentionally using this topic today, and I've tried not to have these conversations on the videos. I've tried to back off on the conversations at in our worship setting where that we are a reconciling church and we do address issues of full inclusion, I have tried to pull out my family narrative in this. I want to share with you some of the things that I am able to do now because of my willingness to listen and to learn and to grow. Not just to run off in the facts and the figures that I believed in the moment, but to have allowed myself over the years to grow and be transformed within myself so that I can be a representative of the true caregiving of God. So much of my early faith life existed within the phrase, the pastor's thing. And that's a blessing. It was a blessing to have some good mentors in my life who have enabled me to have a foundation in growing. It has been a blessing for me to 
have had mentors, faith mentors in my life that I listened to, that I watched, that I interacted with, and I watched them interact with other people. And I began to see the doors that were opened because of their willingness to be involved and to learn and to interact with others. I am who I am today because of dear leaders like a Palmer Lowry, like a Brad Bensinger, like a John Farmer, who showed me what it means to look past things. But I also watched in the very early years of my faith development, I was in sermons that shared things that as an adult that has gone through this journey, I am appalled that I sat in those rooms. I grew up with some faith statements, some faith obligations that were more harmful for others and even harmful for me without fully investigating them, without fully weighing them out. I existed within a mindset, if the pastor said it, it must be true, so that's how it has to be. So again, I take a short moment of saying thank you to individuals like a Palmer Lowry, like a Brad Bensinger, like a John Farmer, like a David St. Clair, who started to open my eyes to the reality that we need to look at the world for what it is. We need to look at the world's needs for what the world is calling out for. And that has helped me become a person that doesn't pray for people to change their identities. I've become a person today on March 31st that says on the day of transgender visibility, I am quite proud of my son, my child, my son with whom I am well pleased. The teenage Drew Davis would have been afraid. The teenage Drew Davis would have feared for a dear soul. The teenage Drew Davis would have felt X, Y, and Z and unintentionally harmed an individual on this journey. That's a fact. But I am blessed of being willing to not just sit within an idea and just go with it and live with it. It's because of being willing to investigate things just a little bit further, to learn about things just a little bit more, that I am able to stand here as not just an ally and an advocate. I'm able to stand here with full-hearted support with no fears and worries because I know that my LGBTQ brothers and sisters and non-binary friends all exist within a realm that we are all loved and cared for and cherished by the same God. And the things that bestow our identities, whether it be the Southern hospitality and the yes ma'am and the no sirs of a Drew Davis, or the celebration of who we love. It's a journey of being willing to investigate and learn. Unfortunately, one of the battles that we exist in within our faith becomes us balancing out what it means to be people of faith that are willing to jump into the deep end of the pool, to jump through new exciting doors, to talk about topics that others would have shunned in the path. There is fruitful realities that exist within those things. Being willing to step forward, and even though that if I weigh the pros and the cons, the cons may win, but I step out and do it anyway, there is fruitful blessings that exist in that. And we need to be the individuals who are willing to have the tough conversations we 
need to be the individuals that are willing to listen to the reality of other people's lives. We need to hear the stories that we are not telling so that we can see the full expansion of how God exists and we can interact within the full expansion of the work that God is doing. The more we learn and the more we apply, the more people are cared for. So we get to this moment of the doubting Thomas and Thomas says, I won't believe in it unless that I do X, Y, and Z. So that's where this narrative remains in negative. Because if we go into situations and we're proclaiming what we will not do, then while we're not doing it, we're also limiting ourselves from learning about it and then trying it because we're hard pressed on what we will not do. So that's where this narrative in the Doubting Thomas stays the ne negative. Thomas says, I will not believe this unless I can touch the palm, I can touch the side, All right? So within our reality, we, we can't do that. There's things that we're being called to interact with that we can't touch the palm. We, we can't touch the side. But yet we still need to be willing to learn and grow and to aspire to find ways to interact with these things so that we can become a part of the narrative. Before LGTBQ became letters that lived in my house, before transgender identity was something that I was able to understand from a first-hand account, I didn't have a side to touch. I didn't have a direct conversation. But what I did have was the desire to understand. I had the, the desire to listen. I had the desire of saying, if anyone is left out, everyone will be left out. And although I didn't have the first-hand accounts in front of me, it became the desire to learn that opened doors for me to realize the friends around me who may have been scared to share their identity because who I proclaimed to be. It was in those moments that I began to realize the souls who were hurting and crying that I didn't understand I was hurting until I learned more and more and listened more and more. And when I found myself going to the places where I could have the conversations, when I was not the one that would say, I would not do this unless when I became the person willing to investigate, to go out and to learn and to grow is when I could actually touch and interact with the side and the ribs. And I was finding myself in places that I could have the full conversations and understand. There is that place that Thomas almost missed the message. And I fear sometimes it's the place that we live and breathe. When we keep saying what we won't do, I won't do this unless, I will not do this unless, that limits the conversation. But the conversation opened for Thomas. The conversation opened for Drew Davis. And the conversation opened that now I get to participate in some beautiful ministry that is inspiring to open doors of care and this way that Jesus Christ doesn't have to walk through a door. He can be open and just walk in freely and hopefully begin to have some interaction with some places where individuals, it's not want, but can't believe. I can't believe this because I've been hurt too much. I can't believe it because I've been pushed aside far too often. 
I can't believe it because I have been hurt more than I have been able to have a celebration. And it's that battle. It's that reality that we have to open doors for. We have to be the ones that are willing to try, willing to believe, willing to go onto the journey and go to the places to not just say what we believe, but to investigate what is. There is a beauty within it all. If we step out in the actions of faith and we're willing to have conversations and we set the word beside I want, then we can grow into understandings that open beautiful realities for others. Thank you for listening to this from, with me. I may pay, post this on my Facebook page in March, but this will be a video that will be in a video worship service in April. Let's be willing to go on the conversations. Let's don't be the doubting Thomas that won't, but let's be the doubting Thomas that investigates, that learns, that reaches out, that interacts, that finds the relationships and finds the conversations because my willingness to do that has given my kid a dad that he really needs. I hope that your willingness to do that will give someone else a best friend, a brother, a sister, a mentor, an aunt and uncle, a mom and dad, someone that they can turn to so that they can find within a lot of narratives that says we want, they can hear a narrative that says you can and there's a place at the table for you. My name is the Reverend Michael Drew Davis. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God is love. We'd Amen. like to have the opportunity to get to know you. Please email us at ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And if you've been enjoying our services online, please email us. Please say hello. Again, that's ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And also, if you'd like to give to our church, please go to northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Again, that's northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Thank you for joining us. Thank you once again for joining us in worship. 
Let's join together in our closing benediction. Through Christ, God has given us a new birth into a living hope. God has given us an inheritance that is imperishable. Christ has given us an inheritance that is undefiled and unfading. An inheritance protected by the power of God. Christ is among us now and forever. We will not doubt but believe. Go with the peace of Christ. Amen.